We're going to play a game. I have a top hat, and in this top hat uh, is a pile of words, one word per page. Um, you've been asked to send in names, people, places, things, which we put into this hat, mix them all up, I pull out one at random, and I am to say what the word on here, or what that symbolizes or signifies, has to do with the Cuban Missile Crisis. The idea being, I guess, that uh, a person like myself who's lived inside the Cuban Missile Crisis for more than a quarter of a century ought to be able to relate just about everything to it. Or maybe I even do that like a nervous tick habitually. Let's see. This one says, Lady Gaga. What do I know about Lady Gaga? Very little, very little. Um, well, um, pictures I've seen, and I haven't seen many, but some of the pictures I've seen suggest that her persona of the woman who plays Lady Gaga when she's singing in, in music videos is a, plays a prostitute. And that's the connection. That is the link, I think, to something not trivial, but very central and important about the Cuban Missile Crisis, which is that the People of Cuba throughout the 1950s came to feel that they were being abused by the United States primarily because the United States was treating the island as essentially a house of prostitution. Americans were coming down with a lot of money and they were uh, using the services of the Cuban prostitutes which then uh, became big business. That fed the hotel business and the gambling business. The mafia who were on the island too trying to create what is now called Las Vegas uh, were thrilled at this because anything that brings people to the island with money is good. Now, the Cubans around Fidel Castro, the Cubans who made the revolution, hated this. In fact, some of them, before the revolution, when they traveled abroad outside Cuba, when they were asked where they were from, they would say, Argentina, Argentina, rather than to say Cuba because everybody would smile like, oh, Cuba, huh, either I've been there and I know why I've been there or somebody else has been there and I know why they were there and you're one of those? <laughs> Mm, you see? So, humiliating. But also humiliated by whom? By the Americans. The Americans accounted for 95% of all the tourist business in Cuba back in the 1950s. Of course, that's no longer true, but it was then. Fidel Castro makes his revolution anti-American, partly for this. It's all about American influence. It's about Americans pushing Cubans around. And this guy has the gumption to actually resist it, to resist the Americans. He does this, the revolution becomes anti-American. He needs help because the Americans notice this and they begin threatening him. This is when the assassination attempts begin. He needs help so he goes to where? The Soviet Union, the other superpower. If you're gonna to try to hold off the superpower and you're this little tiny poor country, you need a big, big partner. Well, that was the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union then says, well, we'd be happy to put missiles in. Missiles, that will protect you from the Americans. Yeah, Cubans say, okay. In come the missiles, and out of that comes this moment in late 1962 where the world was almost blown up. That was the way it happened. And a non-trivial connection with that is the way the Americans saw Cuba as a pleasure island, as, a, as a, a, essentially a whorehouse of the Western Hemisphere. And part of what the Cuban Revolution was about to, was to toss that out and start all over again uh, from scratch and turn the island into a communist socialist workers paradise. At least that was the theory. So Lady Gaga and the Cuban Missile Crisis, the character of Lady Gaga, we'd like to thank Lady Gaga for playing such a character and because in my uh, partly demented and warped Cuban Missile Crisis brain, there's a direct connection between the character she plays and the revolution carried out on the island by Fidel Castro.